Hello, I'm Damien Radcliffe. I'm an Honorary Research Fellow here at Cardiff University. And in this short video, I'm going to be talking to you about data journalism, which is something of an embryonic concept here in the community media space, uh, but one which has lots of potential and exciting opportunities for all of you. Here are my five quick top tips, the first of which is to say, try and keep it simple. So there are lots of uh, data sets that are increasingly being released by a range of different public bodies which you can potentially use to harness to find stories for your site. Here's an example from King's Cross Environment in London which took a very simple data set and Will Perrin who runs that site explains how he turned that data into a short story for his website. Another opportunity is to explore how you might be able to take a particular topic which you examine in depth around a series of given data sets that examine that, that issue. So here's an example from Birmingham, also in the UK, uh, around the time of a number of budget cuts a few years ago, where a specific niche website was set up to just examine the impact of those cuts and to plot the impact of that on a particular site. You don't have to set up a standalone site. Here's an example from the US, where Neighborhood Web SJ in San Jose created a Google map where they put pins in the map uh, to show where there had been homicides during a particular year and then you could click through to see the original police reports and other media content related to those individual homicides. You can also use embeddable tools and widgets and that's something I would really recommend exploring from companies like Fix My Street or C Click Fix. Uh, these enable you to put a widget onto, the, onto your website uh, and then citizens and consumers in your area can input their ideas and suggestions around issues that they would like to see fixed in their in their area. This gives you fantastic insights into the things that matter to your community, it offers you great leads into um, stories, potential campaign ideas, and because there's a direct link between the citizen through your website and local authority uh, bodies and agencies, they uh, also take that data and use it to actually get things done. So you can see results as a result of that interaction and that can be very powerful and rewarding for both you and your community. If you have the skills, you may want to consider opportunities to go more interactive and create uh, either interactive elements um, on your website or into standalone space. Here's an example from uh, dnainfo.com in New York where they took information related to stop and frisk numbers and from that created an interactive feature which allowed you to see where the top 25 stop and frisk locations were and allowed you to do analysis across a range of other different demographics to see whether there were uh, differences as to who was stopped where. However, I would urge one word of caution in terms of uh, doing more interactive elements which is that they can be very time consuming to create and also to maintain. And here's an example of a fantastic resource that was created by the San Francisco based uh, website The Bay Citizen. They took uh, bike accident information from a four year period and from that created a really interesting deep and rich interactive uh, website a bike accident tracker which allowed you to understand where there had been particular accidents, who was at fault, do analysis by time of day and all these kinds of things which meant that if you were a cyclist you could use that information to try and plot the best and safest way home. However, the site is immensely complex, takes quite a long time to load as you'll find if you try it out and it hasn't been updated in, in some time. So whilst it's a fantastic resource, do consider the challenge of how you maintain information with the data that you potentially have access to. So a few final thoughts on this space. The first is to just um, stress really that the data in itself is not a story. So all of the examples that I've given you before, they don't just simply present the data. They require some sort of analysis, and interpretation and context to really provide the value uh, to tell the story behind that data. And if you want an example of a site that tried to do that but didn't give that context, then it might be worth looking at the history of every blog in the States, which provided a lot of open data and information, but really required the boots on the ground to turn that into something more meaningful. You might think that data journalism isn't necessarily uh, for you, but hopefully a few of these examples will show that actually it need not be complicated unless you want to make it so. And really just a reminder that this is a very new and nascent form of journalism. It's one that uh, big players and small players are all experimenting and learning with. And in that respect, it really is a great leveler. So the next great innovations in this space or examples of creative, impactful 
uh, campaigns and journalism could come just as much from you as it could do from a large media corporation. So best of luck. If you want to know more about this or any of the other things that, uh, that I've talked about during the course of this program, then you can please visit my website, damienradcliffe.com slash hyperlocal, where you'll find lots of examples of uh, slides, reports, and other materials related to hyperlocal that might be of use to you.